Well, hello everyone and welcome to the channel once again today. I just wanted to share with you guys what I've been working on recently. In the last video I did, I explained some basic math on the Arduino board and assembly language and today I want to share with you guys why I need to do all that. So I'm going to share with you today the temperature monitoring system that I've been working on for the Arduino. I'm going to do a little explaining about how it works. I'm not going to explain all the code, but of course I'll make it available for you guys in the description. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. All right, guys. Now, before I get into the technical explanation of how it all works, let me just show you what I'm working with here first. So I've got the Arduino Mega 2560 here, and you can see I've made somewhat of a breakout board for it. So I've got three different spaces here for a temperature sensor. So then I've got three of the LM35 temperature sensors hooked up. I have two here on my desk and the third one is actually going out to a vent in the register so I can monitor the temperature of the air coming out of the ductwork. You know, the idea is that um, a homeowner can monitor the temperature of the air coming out of their ducts. They can monitor their equipment or just monitor the temperature of their house if they're on vacation, you know. You can do it remotely. And like I said, you can view the temperatures remotely. I have a serial to ethernet server. And yes, I am aware that you can buy an ethernet shield for an Arduino and I may do that at a later date, but for now, it's a Digiport server TS2. It's a serial to ethernet server. And so we can see the temperatures anywhere in the world as long as we have internet access. The only thing you really need here is a Telnet client. And as you can see, I'm using PuTTY. Uh, we just connect to dhcservice.com, port 2001 with Telnet. And we can see the temperatures anywhere in the world. And you can see that the three different temperature sensors, the two on my desk are uh, A0 and A1. And the one that I was showing in the vent is actually A2. So you can see there's quite a bit of temperature stratification. It's actually a lot cooler there down on the floor. So anyways, that's what it is right now. All right, so if you want to monitor temperatures, then that means you need some kind of temperature sensor. So it's a device that converts, somehow it converts the temperature of whatever it is that you're trying to sense into an electrical signal. It could be a varying current, a varying voltage, or it could be a change of resistance. So for my project, what I'm using right now is called LM35. It's a temperature sensor, and this one outputs a voltage. All right, so it's got three terminals on it, okay? Uh, the first one is the input, uh, five volts DC, and I think it can go between 4 and 30 volts DC, but well, we're using the Arduino board here, 5 volts is good enough. Uh, pin 2 is actually going to be the sensor output, and pin 3 is the ground. So the output's pretty straightforward here. It outputs 10 millivolts for every degree Celsius that it is. So let's say if it's 25 degrees Celsius, it's going to output 250 millivolts, or basically just 0.25 volts. So it's it's a pretty convenient, handy little temperature sensor. Okay, so connecting it to the Arduino is pretty easy and straightforward. You just connect the supply voltage terminal, that's pin 1, you connect it to the 5 volt output there on the Arduino. The ground just goes to the ground, self-explanatory, and the sensor output goes into the analog input. Now if you want to use more than one of these, you can do that. So your first one's going to go on A0, your second one's going to go on A1. If you want to use three, you put the third one on A2, and so on and so on. And I believe they said the Mega 2560, you can do 14 different analog inputs. I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that, but just for this project right now, what I've got going is three. So we're just using A0, A1, and A2. Okay, so after you have your temperature sensors hooked up, now you're going to have to do some basic programming and some basic math. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is set up the analog to digital converter. Now before I go on any further, we're going to have to understand how an analog to digital converter works. And before we can do that, we need to understand a simple device called a comparator. Now a comparator has two inputs and it has one output. Now one input is a reference voltage. That's kind of like our baseline, what we want to compare against. The other input is the sensor input. So let's say we could put a temperature sensor on that input or a pressure sensor or even a potentiometer, anything that has a changing voltage. Now the way the comparator works is simple. Anytime the input voltage is greater than the reference voltage, the output is high or it's one. It's basically it's on. Anytime the input voltage is less than the reference voltage, then it's off. So if we had one comparator, then we could only tell if the temperature was above a certain temperature. For example, if our reference voltage was half a volt and the temperature sensor was reading 50 Celsius or greater, then the output would be on. If it was reading less than 50 Celsius, then the output would be off. That's a simple operation of a comparator, all right? But imagine we had eight comparators. Now, if we have eight comparators, we can tell what the temperature is in eight different increments. And this is similar to the way that an analog to digital converter works. It doesn't have eight individual increments, but it does have eight bits. So it can have a decimal value between zero and 255. So we have 255 basically different degrees 
of measurement with our temperature sensor. But just like a comparator, the analog to digital converter has a reference voltage. And this is going to be critical to your programming and the math that you're going to have to do to get the right result. The reason that we have to do some math here is because that the analog to digital converter doesn't work in a very straightforward way. So ideally, if our temperature sensor was reading 25 Celsius, the analog to digital converter would just have a value in it that was 25. But unfortunately, it doesn't work this way. So if you read the Arduino data sheet, it tells you that the analog to digital converter works like this. The number that's going to be in the analog to digital converter register is equal to the voltage input at the analog input pin multiplied by 1025 divided by the reference. So if we put 0.25 volts on the input, then it's not going to have a value of 25 in the register. It's going to have something completely different. So you have three different references to pick from here. So you can change what the result is, what it's going to be in the register, depending on the input voltage. So you can pick 1.1 volts, 2.56 volts, or 5 volts. So just to give you an example here, let's say that your input was 25 degrees Celsius. That would be 0.25 volts. So if you pick the 5 volt reference, the answer, the final answer would be 51.2. And that's not 25 degrees Celsius. Now to divide that down to 25, we'd have to do a number with a fraction or a decimal point. And we don't want that. To do the best kind of programming, the simplest, we want to use an integer. But if you pick 2.56 volts as a reference, then we can use an integer. So let me give you an example. If we did 25 degrees Celsius, it'd be 0.25 multiplied by 1024. Divide that by 2.56, it comes out to 100. Now we can just simply divide 100 by 4 we can get the right answer to be in the register and we don't have to do anything else. So for the sake of simplicity, I picked a 2.56 volt reference. All right, now that we've gotten through that, I'm just gonna go through the code really quick. I'm not gonna tell you absolutely everything about it. That would just take way too much time. So let's just get started here. So the first line here, we're just setting up the CPU frequency where the program begins and we'll see message one right here and this is what you want to go along with your first sensor reading so whatever you could you can make that uh, whatever room temperature you can make that outdoor temperature wherever you put your temperature sensor that's up to you same with message 2 and message 3 so those are just the messages now stack set the only thing that does is set up our call stack uh, usart init it initializes the serial port so it can send those messages out uh, yes yeah, set bar that should be pretty obvious it sets up the zero ports baud rate. Uh, ADC set, this is where the analog to digital converter is set up. It just enables it and I chose a, a lower frequency divider. Uh, so I wanted to make the analog to digital converter go slower. I found that when it was at its highest setting uh, it actually kind of messed up the results. Now sensor 1 here, 2, and 3 are where the important things happen here. So the first thing is it just moves an indexing register to the first message and then call print. And print, obviously, the print routine, it just prints. It just displays the message on the screen. But right here is where the code is sent to change the channel number. So the first one is going to read from A0. So obviously, we want to read from sensor 1. We need to select A0. And this is the right code to get to A0. And then it sends it to the ADMUX register, which controls which channel it's on. So it's all available in the um, data sheet, the uh, Atmel Mega 2560 data sheet. It, it, it'll tell you the numbers that you need to put in, but just for quick reference, this just gets to A0. And then what happens is it calls the routine top. And in top, it takes a value in from analog to digital lower and higher byte. Now this is actually a 10-bit analog to digital converter, but we're only using the lower byte it's it's kind of complicated to explain, but we don't really need the higher byte anyways. We're not going to get too accurate. We're only going to be accurate to the whole degree. So interestingly enough, after you change the channel from A0 to A1, or in fact from any channel to the next, the first result gets a little bit messed up, so you have to discard the first result. Now after you do that, you can finally get the information in from the analog to digital converter and put it in, I'm using the register R18 here. After that, the only thing that happens is, like I said, is the math happens. So we need to 
divide it by 4 to get the right number. And that's what happens here. My last video was the division by subtraction on the Arduino. That's what's happening right here at Math 4.1. That's just division by subtraction. We're just taking 4 out of the result until we can't do it anymore. And then after we, after we do that, when we get the final result, then we divide it down so we can get the, the decimal value out of the hexadecimal value. And that was also in the previous video. So if you don't understand any of that, that's all in the previous video. So yeah, Math 1 just divides it by 100 so we can get the hundreds place digit. And then Math 2 does the tens place digit and then so on. And then it also adds the, um, yeah, it also adds the ASCII encoding because otherwise we would just get garbage on the screen. All right now here's the print routine right here. Like I said, the only thing that this actually does is it just prints things. It just sends it. Actually, what it does, it just sends it to the serial port here. You can see STS UDR0. That's USART data register zero. That's all it does. And it just sends it one at a time and it loops until it's printed all the characters. Uh, new line here. It just makes a new line on the screen. It also sends carriage return. Uh, clear screen actually clears it all out because otherwise it would just keep making new lines and what we don't want that we just want three lines so we just tell the terminal program to clear that out and make only three lines uh, wait the only thing that wait does is it actually waits on the serial port to finish sending if it's not finished sending it waits some more and wait C waits on the analog to digital converter and it waits until the analog to digital converter is done otherwise the results are going to get messed up so anyways yeah i'm not going to explain all the code but i'm going to make the source code available for you guys if you want to play with it yeah, you're free to do so all right guys that's going to do it for this one yeah i may return to this temperature monitoring system maybe once i get it more set up i may actually put a ethernet shield on it so i can do without the serial to ethernet server basically i just want to make it so that people can keep an eye on their stuff when they're away from home and i know there's there's probably a million ways to do this but i, I find it fascinating anyways guys thanks again for watching i'm going to leave the source code link in the description and i'll see you guys next time